Ouch! Ah! Ow! Ow! Ah! I tell you what, wearing shorts was not a good idea. Ow! Morning. Welcome back to Wee Brun Van. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that exciting. <laughs> Today we're heading off to a site at Mickleton, which is near Barnard Castle in the county of Gloucestershire. Spot on. And we've got a great day for travelling. It's nice and warm, even though I do have my woolly jumper on. <laughs> So the only thing to decide now is who's driving. Oh, you want to drive? I don't mind. I don't mind. Toss you for it. Right. Okay. Heads or tails? Heads. Right, Kira. You be the judge. No cheating. Mickleton and actually it's another day we didn't film a great deal yesterday you can tell it's another day because I haven't got my woolly jumper on today <laughs> fresh t-shirt so we just settled in really last night I had a really nice evening a relaxing easy evening and Trish made some fish I think it was sea bass wasn't yep, it sea bass we were going to have them on the barbie but you just did it inside and it was jolly nice I have to say mmm compliments to the chef oh wait a minute that's me. So the plans for today, I think, are to go for a walk, aren't they? Yes, they are. So we're going to walk from Mickleton, where we are just now, over the Tees Railway Walk to Middleton on Tees. And I think you do go via a viaduct. And at Middleton on Tees, I think we're going to have a nice spot of lunch at a pub. Yeah, that'll be nice. Or it'll a cafe. Be, and it'll be good to see a viaduct, especially after the last time we were at the Kelpies recently, weren't we? Mm. And that was a bit of a disappointment. We didn't get to the aqueduct there. So maybe that'll make up for it a little bit. Right, that's us on the Tees railway line. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. We've got all these plants around, wildflowers and what have you. You know, it reminds me of that film Stand By Me. <laughs> They're walking along the railway line. Just want to keep checking behind us in case there's a train coming. Come on, Kira. It's quite easy to get these shots of Kira. All that I do is I just dangle this camera upside down on the selfie stick in front of her. So obviously it's going to record her upside down until such time as I get the footage into my software and I can flip it up the right way. But actually, I think she looks quite at home in that sort of strange upside down world. After all, she is a miniature Australian Labradoodle. <laughs> boom, boom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you've got to laugh, haven't you? It's amazing what we're seeing on this railway line, all the plants and everything, but the highlight, we've just seen this little bird lying there on the track. Yeah, so I was walking along with Kira. Kira was a couple inches away from it and I noticed it. Apparently it's a snipe, so it's a wader bird and usually you find it up on the moors. Someone was telling us that if you go near them normally they would scurry away. So obviously she's protecting her wee chick. 
so well camouflaged. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe we saw such a thing. It was Amazing. absolutely, it was absolutely great to see the way that it was looking after its little chick. Yeah. Both of them tucked into the side there, thankfully, because there's people coming along here, walkers, cyclists. So it was nestled into the side. Yeah, remaining perfectly still, so still that I thought, oh, is it okay? And then it did move and I thought, yeah, it's fine. We're on the Loon Viaduct, which was on the Tees Valley Railway, linking Darlington and Bishop Auckland. It opened in 1868 and closed in 1964. The path is taking us through a farm, but it's about to get a bit more difficult. The path has now got really narrow. I'm not sure if we've came the right way, to be honest. Ah, how am I going to get through this? Ouch! Ah! Ow! Ow! Ah! I tell you what, wearing shorts was not a good idea. Ow! Right, we're going back. Trish was up ahead and she said that these jaggies, these thistles, get even worse. Nettles, actually. Nettles. Stinging nettles. And they've been stinging away at my calves. So we're going back before it gets any worse. So I think we'd went the wrong way, actually. Come on, Kira, let's go. We've now seen a sign that directs us to this public footpath. So yeah, this must surely be the way. Tap. These lambs are a bit curious. I don't think they've ever seen a black sheep before. That's not a sheep! Well, we're back at the camper van. That was a great little walk. So much so, Trish has actually crashed out in the van. And Kira's done the same. She's crashed out on the mat. Now we found a great little spot at the bridge at the end of the walk. Trish was keen to try out her new ball chucker that she's got to play with Kira. We've bought this new chucker for Kira's ball. It's called Compact 9. That's the bag. It's this size. But look, by magic. Hey! And what's that in your hand? That's the wee bag. So what happens is when she's finished, you take the ball full of slavers. Lovely. Put it in the bag, so you don't have to touch. So you've got a little ball bag. <laughs> uh, I'm already equipped. Then after that, Kira was thirsty, so we went down to the bridge, and Kira had a good old drink out the river. Oh, 
After that we went into Mickleton, we had a nice little walk around, a lovely little place. I was looking for a butcher because we are going to have a barbie tonight. Oh, something for the barbie. I've already got some stuff so I just need something to supplement it a little bit. I was thinking about a couple of nice chops. That's it. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank Cheers. See you now. I'm going to start this barbecue now. I think we've got a really good system, so let me show you that. So this is a cob barbecue. I'm sure we've let you see this before. But the system that we've got now is quite good for packing. We didn't want to bring a big bag of coals. It's so bulky. So what we do now is we split it up into little bags depending on the number of barbecues that we want to have. The inside, as you can see, we've made up individual bags. One, two, three, four, five. Trisha's up, as you can see, reading her book. You wake? Yeah. Good. Because it's time to get the grub on. Right, I think that's Trisha's vegan sausages just about ready, sizzling away. Cut them in half because she likes them a bit crispy. Time now for the main event. That's mine. I'm going to have pork sausages and a wee chop that I picked up at the butcher's. Not having all these sausages, mind. One's for Kira, and I might keep a couple for tomorrow morning for my brekkie. Right, I'm going to tuck into this. How does that look? And then we're going to wrap it up for the night. Trish has already had her vegan ones. I think she enjoyed them. Tomorrow, the plans for tomorrow, we're going to go to um, some waterfalls called High Force. Now apparently these are one of the most impressive waterfalls in England, so we're looking forward to that. That's all for tomorrow. That's another morning and we're just about ready to go. We're going to do what we said we were going to do last night. Here is all strapped up in the van and we're heading off to North Force Waterfall. So we're going to park at Bowley's Visitor Centre. We've read online that it's the better place to park and we can walk from there to Lower Force Waterfall and from Lower Force Waterfall walk back up to High Force Waterfall so I think it's a day for walking the weather seems really nice it's to be dry all day fingers crossed um, and I'm sure we'll have a lovely time just wherever you can find the space as it looks like a busy busy place yep Right, that's us parked. Four quid it costs for parking, but that gives us up to midnight. We'll not be here until that time, but we can have a good day out here. So we've just been into the Bowley's Visitor Centre and I've picked up a couple of leaflets. 50p each, but I think it's quite good. It helps to cover the cost for production. So we're going to do the high force and a wee bit of the Bowley's Geo Trail. It's a circular route. When I spoke to the guy, he says it'll take maybe um, depending on how fast you walk, one and a half to two and a half hours and I said, well probably for me, I'll be more like three hours and Mike filming. <laughs> So some people back there looks like they're going in, but we're not hanging about. We'll maybe see them going in. You never know. Uh, we did catch a couple of guys jumping in. Now, the first chap, he was so fast I could hardly keep up with him with the camera. And he went, I did my best, but I thought he might come round again, and he did. So the second time he went in, I was ready with the camera this time, and I followed him all the way down. And then another chap, he had to go as well rather them than me. You don't fancy having a go at that? No. No, no, rather them than me. Well, we're on the pathway now, which takes you from low force falls up to the high force falls. And this walk takes you right up the side of the river, follows it all the way up. Beautiful pathway, beautiful plants and flowers again, all the way around. 
So we did spot one that we didn't spot on the railway walk, that was a little common spotted orchid and that was a great little thing to see. I was looking for one yesterday but I couldn't see one. We've arrived at the High Force Falls and I can take a look over the edge with a little bit of help from a very long selfie stick. It's a bit too windy to put Midge up in the air, but half an hour later back at the van. We had a really great day out at the falls today. They were quite spectacular. Something that I'll remember for a long time, I think. We hope you liked this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Yep. And remember and subscribe. And we're looking forward to the next trip. Yep. And you'll see us on that one. Right. Bye. Ta -ra. Bye.